season undefeated. A total of 20 games, 19 wins and one loss. And now I will introduce to you the players. Small correction there, there are 19 wins and one tie. No losses at all. And here is the team. Number two, Jamie Lamont, right wing. Number three, Mario Chacon, left wing. Number four, Sean Thibault, left wing. Number five, Frank Sinati, right fullback. Number seven, Dean Principe, right wing. Number nine, Robert Palladino, inside right. Number 10, Carlo Castrochino, inside left. Number 11, Jeff Falcioni, left wing. Number 15, John Peruzzini, left wing. Number 18, Paul Miatello, center half. Number 19, Lenny Papano, right wing. Number 22, goalkeeper, Paolo Zanetti. Assistant coach, Joe Colusi. And your coach, Eddie Palladino. There is your 1983 team. Missing from the picture at this time, we have number six, Ricky Stepancic, which is a right half. Number eight, Patrick McCann, left wing. Number 12, Mike Rondina, left full back. 14, Tony Salvo, center forward. Number 16, Michael Cassidy, left wing. And number 17, Paulino Rocca, right full back. This is your 1983 undefeated Pee Wee soccer team. In uh, mostly in center field, as usual, the, the teams are evenly matched. The um, Vip Palladino Motors is still ahead, one nothing on the lone goal scored by Carlo Castricino about the 10 minute, 10 minute marks of the first period. Carlo is number 10 and is dominating the center field. He's one of the better players of the team, if, if not the best. Scored uh, 36 goals in 16 only games. Len is trying to control the ball, but he uh, does not. Uh, and he get back to the blue shirts of uh, Ricky Stapanchis. Ricky is to Carlo. Carlo misses the header, but the ball nevertheless goes to number 10. Carlo has got a chance of scoring, and he does. Beautiful. Second scoring. Second goal. 2 nothing right now at the 15, 16 minute mark by, uh, by number 10, Carlo Castricino, who already scored 36 goals. This is the second of the night. When the ball gets to him, he usually does not miss it. At the 16 minute mark, he makes it 2 nothing. With Aladino Moro's uh, team, uh, excellent playmaking, excellent playmaking by the whole team. Five different players were involved on this goal with a final touch by Carlo, the extreme opportunist of the team. He had earlier a chance of scoring two more goals, missing by a um, foot or so. Here's the play back again. At this time, they scored it. After making the finals because Team Toyota was disqualified, Croatia Adria stood on the verge of winning the Sudbury Senior Men's Soccer League tonight, leading the two-game total goal series 2-1 after a victory Saturday over the Italia Flyers. They could have won it all, but Raymond Donner draws Italia even on a penalty kick. Ahmad Kazlov gives Croatia the lead before Kramer Forth ties it at four. And that meant overtime tonight at Queen's Athletic Field. About 12 minutes in, Italia's Carlo Castricino goes barreling down the right side and scores, beating Adrian's Yemtu Marjuski. Italia hangs on to win the game 3-1 to one in overtime and a two-game total goal 4-3. to three. So the Italia Flyers, the senior men's soccer champs, and I talk to a couple of the heroes. We're talking to the winning coach and the uh, the hero, I suppose, of the game, the guy who scored the winning goal, Carlo Castrocino. First of all, Carlo, uh, describe the goal and what was going through your mind as you were running down the field. Well, I think uh, my brother gave a good ball to uh, Sergio, and he uh, nodded it on, and we've been uh, trying to beat their defense. We know we're fast on it, and uh, the ball went through and outran their uh, sweeper. Went in the net. Now, Joey, uh, you weren't expecting to play... Uh, Croatia in the final, you were, I guess you were expecting Team Toyota. Is this uh, just as satisfying? 
Oh, yes, very satisfying because uh, Adria has improved really, really lots this year, and uh, they're a hard team to play against. They're young, they run, they played with four midfielders trying to control us, and they uh, tonight they put three guys back in the middle, so we tried to use the wing. And uh, it took us a while to get going, but once the guys did, uh, started playing our system, we just started breaking through, and it's, it's a great moment right now, I tell you. Now, I should add here, the team... Cup soccer action. Team Toyota all over the Italia Flyers. Six to one. Team Toyota advances against Sioux Croatia at the end of the month. As for soccer, the sun shining, the wind blowing, and we will have video of that soccer game tonight, hopefully. It was Croatia Adria in blue against, there we go, against the Italia Flyers in white. Croatia going to the attack, but just missing a chance in front. But Italia does not. Leading already the pass laid out front to number 10, Carlo Castricino and Yes, siree, he pots it in the corner as Italia romps to a 5-2 victory to reach the finals. Tomorrow at Lily Creek, it is Nickel City Lasers and the Sudbury Hawks. For Queen's Field, Canada's national under-16 team taking on a Sudbury squad, the Selects, 19 years of age and under. Now the Nationals are gearing up for the Junior World Cup of Soccer right here in Canada. Goes next month. So obviously, they wanted to win it big. And speaking of big, a decent crowd on hand to see these young Nationals, picked mostly from B.C. and Ontario. 2-1 the score into the first half. On to the second to go. A perfect setup in the middle to Jack Wendt of B.C. His second goal, a 3-1 advantage. Minutes later, Wendt leads Kevin Holness and big number eight. Outraces the defender to the ball. Canada goes on top, 4-1. All smiles for Holness and Wendt. Great chance for Sudbury to draw closer. Two selects all alone, but Dan Giroud drives a harmless shot into the arms of the Canadian goal. Seconds later, it is 5-1. Andre Ballot down the side, into the middle, where Sandro Cesario hammers one by Dave Ledger. It is 5-1. It's almost 6-1. Canada scores on a header, but it is ruled offside. And then Sudbury finds the range. We catch the tail end of it. A deflection misplayed. Brent Salem takes credit for the goal. Antoine Lakersic can't believe he missed it. And seconds later, the goalie gambles and loses. Carlo Caspuccino as the selects come back to make a game of it. The final 5-3. Later, I talk to national team coach Brian Hughes and coach of the selects, Kramer Ford. Coach, it looked like you were going to blow them out, and then they got a couple of late goals, a little upset by maybe a defensive lapse late in the game? Uh, certainly, yeah. It's a bit disquieting when you uh, you go from a 5-1 lead to 5-3 uh, with absolutely no pressure at all, and um, that's what happens with young 16-year-olds. They, they're so unpredictable that you never know what they're going to do from one minute to the next, and uh, I have to learn to live with that or try and sort it out, and um, the work over the next few weeks will be to try and sort out and give them a little bit of consistency. I want to ask you, Kramer, uh, how much do you think the kids learned by the game tonight? They did come on near the end of the game. You'd have to be at least pleased with that. Yeah, I think they learned what uh, national uh, team players can do with the ball, both skill-wise and what they can do as a team, because they, uh, they're they definitely playing a system out there, and they know what to do with the ball. So I think they gained uh, a lot of experience about it, but I was happy to see us come back and score two goals at the end. It gave them a little bit of confidence anyway. In a Laurentian Soccer Vs are one step closer to a national title tonight. Greg Zorbis and his boys will host the Provincials Friday against either Toronto or York. The Vs cleared the latest hurdle this afternoon as they disposed of Queens in the OUAA Eastern Final. Now, it is 3-1 Vs in blue. Roy Sousa at midfield drives it towards the net. Ball ends up in the toe of Carlo Castrocino, who drives it home 4-1 as the Vs offense is on the move once more. More insurance, though, is coming up minutes later. Corner kick for Laurentian. Perfect header by Nick Milanovic, his second of the game, 5-1 to one, Laurentian. And at this point, Greg Zorbis knows that it is all over for Queens, and even the Gales coach, Dr. John Walker, realizes that, too. But the Vs will go for more. The goalkeeper is beaten, but Tom Plummer heads it right off the post. Gales last hurrah. A penalty kick, Alan McVicker, scoring in the Vs, Paolo Toscano, but it's just for pride as the V's win it 5-2. Uh, we expected a tough game as they came out uh, very hard on us and uh, they play very hard and uh, we certainly didn't expect uh, you know, if to score five goals on them. They're a very tough team. Uh, we're very happy with the result though. Uh, yeah, it was a lot easier. Uh, 
we we were we were thinking that they were uh, since they tied us one one last time we we didn't we were thinking they'd play the exact same way but uh, once we scored the first goal and another one came in they, they kept coming easier and easier as uh, the game went on these win at soccer v's and a trip to the nationals tomorrow at noon the two will square off the OUAA eastern division title greg zorbis and his boys will put their undefeated record on the line knowing that just one more win will put them in the Nationals. The Soccer V's are just a win away from advancing to the National Championship. In their way stands defending champ University of Toronto Blue. So the adrenaline should be pumping when the two meet tomorrow at noon. It's a challenge to play against a team that, you know, it's, uh, they're supposed to win the whole thing and they are the defending champions. And I think we'll, they'll be probably better prepared for Toronto mentally than we were against Queens. These held the edge in the season series, crushing the Blues at Laurentian in the season opener, then tying them down south. The fact that we have beaten Toronto and we did defeat them convincingly has given us the confidence. I mean, when we play them at Varsity Stadium, they score one goal and they, they celebrate it if it was a World Cup final. So, which means that, uh, you know, they know that uh, they'll be up against a tough team. Certainly, the playoff jitters should be out in light of the home side's 5-2 victory over Queens in the Eastern semifinal Tuesday. Yeah, we seem... Uh a little pumped up, ready, looking forward to Toronto. Uh, we're one step away now from uh, going all the way to CIUs, and uh, we're pretty confident that we can do it. Big game tomorrow, noon. Earth in the Canadian University Soccer Championships. They beat the University of Toronto Blues this afternoon in the Ontario East Division Final. It was not what you'd call ideal conditions for a soccer game, but as the old expression goes, the show must go on, and these two teams were here to play. We pick it up in the second half. Laurentian has a great chance to score on the corner kick, but Toronto goalie Tim Rosenfield punches the ball away. At the end of regulation time, it's scoreless. Then it's on to the overtime period, consisting of two 10-minute halves. Both teams miss several good scoring opportunities, including this one by Laurentian striker Nick Milanovic, who blasts a shot away just before he's tackled to the ground. The hometown fans getting a little restless at the stage. At the end of overtime, it's still 0-0. It then came down to penalty kicks to solve matters. Carlo Castrocino scoring the clincher as the V's win the OUAA East Final and in so doing go on to the Nationals. Next game for the V's is Sunday at 1. Watch behind you. Hey, watch it, number two. Hit him back. Go again, He's playing in a, for a Toronto team this, this summer uh, while playing for the Ontario and Canadian teams. And Castrocino on the touchline. Back out for Plummer. Plummer gets a shot, put to it just wide in the net. But an excellent scoring opportunity once again, Mario. Excellent play. Uh, Carlo Castrocino there. He took his time. He saw Tommy coming in from the back and he just chipped it into the middle, in front of the net. And uh, Tommy missed kick. In midfield. For Kuznick to Spelina. Spelina looking for Kuznick. But Burnett is there to Castrocino. Castrocino on the near wing. The line's 
Benjamin has his flag up, and the referee has noticed. Whistles play down, and we'll have a Croatia throw in. Castrocino believed that he managed to keep the ball in, but uh, obviously in a dispute with the line. Well, the thing is, uh, Tommy was moving in quickly, and he, he had the man beat, and uh, he played, tried to play the ball, and he missed completely, and he did catch the, the player's foot. <laughs> So an opportunity here for one of the most exciting plays in soccer, one-on-one. -on -one. And the Flyers have their sharpshooter, Carlo Castaccino, there. So David Ledger will be uh, well, let's attempting to eye, stop this let, one. Let's keep an eye on the officiating team to see if they do call the, the goalie moving. More than likely not. Castrocino with the shot, and it's in the back of the net. And on a penalty shot, about, with about 28 minutes left to go in the second half, we finally break the goose egg, and it's the Italia Flyers one on a penalty shot, goal by Carlo Castrocino. Resume play here just in just a moment, but certainly the Flyers uh, deserving of a one goal lead. They've carried the play to Croatia so far in this game and had me down the field. Carboni leaves it for Pino Bacaturo, his sweeper. Back to Carboni as Fay runs up for Croatia. Adria Carboni picks it up and we'll have a long clearance. Prasad can't control. Push through for Castrocino. Castrocino with a chance. And a second goal by Castrocino with about 26 minutes left. So two minutes between goals. So it was an excellent play by uh, Tommy. Uh, Tommy Plummer. Plummer, and uh, he split the defense, and uh, Carlo ran in from behind and uh, controlled it and put it in the back of the net. And the again, had a chance at it, but uh, it was well placed. Exactly. It was uh, not one of these shots where he wound up and blasted the ball. It was uh, left, it was directed well uh, and uh, low, difficult for the low, keeper to get down. Uh, far corner, and uh, the goalie got his hand on it, but not enough to uh, prevent it from going in the back of the net. Man. Oh, yes, well done, girl. That <laughs> a boy, I tied. Well, he brought him down the box. The referee's got to give a penalty, and he has. solid finish to the regular season has translated into a home playoff day for the Laurentian University Men's Soccer Club. The Voyagers host the Wilfrid Laurier Golden Hawks Thursday afternoon at 1 o'clock at the LU Field. MCTV's Toby Kaufman caught up with the V's as they prepared for the big match. Every team wants to go into the playoffs on a winning streak and Laurentian is on a roll. Well, we start off a little slow but I think right now we're starting to peak at the right time. The Voyageurs earned a home playoff game with a 1-0 win over previously undefeated Toronto on Saturday and a 1-1 tie with York on Sunday. Both LU goals came courtesy of Giuseppe Politi, and he's not ruling out scoring a third. If we were to eliminate, that would be a really big goal for the team. What's important is that the team wins and we move on to the uh, quarterfinals. But standing in their way is a tough Wilfrid Laurier squad that defeated the Voyageurs 2-0 earlier in the year. However, this time the V's will be at home. I think it'll be an advantage for us. Uh, Laurie's usually playing on turf. Grass, the ball uh, moves uh, a lot more slower, not, not a lot of bounces, and uh, being at home is just uh, 
key because uh, the fans that we have come out in Sudbury are excellent. Home field could also mean cold and windy condition for the V's Southern Ontario opponent. But that doesn't mean coach Carlo Castuccino is hoping for miserable weather. Well, not really, because I'll be standing there on the sidelines. So, uh... But no matter what Mother Nature has in store, the playoffs will get underway at 1 o'clock on Thursday afternoon right here at Laurentian University. Toby Coffin, NCTV Sport. Welcome back, everybody. There is no doubt most athletes, if given the chance, would want to leave their sport while at their best. Now, a few get that chance, but today at Laurentian University, fifth-year men's soccer captain and Sudbury native Dan Falcioni had just such an opportunity in his final home game as a voyageur, foreshadowing, foreshadowing, with the highlights of the V's playoff game against Wilfrid Laurier. Here's MCTV's Toby Kaufman. As if a playoff win wasn't enough motivation, Laurentian could avenge an early season loss to Laurier with a victory Wednesday afternoon. In the 30th minute, the V's get a good chance to get on top early, but the teams would be scoreless at the half. So Laurentian huddles up, and it seems to work. In the 63rd minute, Elko Bolhus is called down in the box. You know what that means. Danny Falcioni lines up the penalty kick and drives it home. Laurentian leads 1-0. But Laurier would not go quietly. With 15 minutes left in regulation, Jeff Collins picks it out of midair. Folks, that's a game saver, keeping it one zip. Then with Laurier pressing and just three minutes to play, Falcioni gets free for an encore. The Sudburyan scores twice in his final home game as the V's advance by a score of two to nothing. Oh, it feels really good. Uh, I knew. There'll be no question with the fifth year guys on our team, both the effort we're going to put out today. Our whole team's really great. We're laden with veterans, and uh, really it's uh, pretty much a story work ending for uh, my half decade here at Laurentian. So what did you tell them at halftime? I'll just keep playing the way it is, but we've got to step it up one more notch. They're playing good, but you, I, I knew they can play a little better, and you've got to pick it up one more notch to play against teams like this. You're in the playoffs now, let's pick it up. The Voyageurs will now travel to London to play Western on Sunday at 1 p.m. Toby Kaufman, MCTV Sports, Sudbury. IAU championship full of confidence. The V's take on the University of Victoria on Thursday, then Wilfred Laurier on Saturday in a rematch of last weekend's OUA final. With a flick of the wrists, Chris Miles is motioning for his teammates to bring it on. A subtle but telling move from an Ontario All-Star defender taking time to play a little goal at practice. And it's that bring it on attitude Miles and the Laurentian soccer voyageurs hope to carry to the field when the CIAU championship opens later this week at McMaster University in Hamilton. I expect a lot from our guys. We, uh, it seemed like we weren't uh, going to make it here to begin with, and I don't think we were supposed to make it here, but we've got uh, a lot of young talent. Uh, our midfield, Lawrence Mahoney, has been playing well. Um, and of course, our goalie been, uh, has been un remarkable. So it, uh, I expect a lot from us this weekend. We want it more than anyone else. And we have a good team spirit, and we have two good captains and a good coach. So we're working hard at it. So far, the hard work has paid off, with playoff victories over Queens and Waterloo, and Laurentian's first trip to the Nationals since 1994. We have great chemistry this year. We have a good core. Um, I've been playing with some of these guys for four years, some for three. We got good rookies that came in. Um, all around, we're strong in every position. Strength the Voyagers have been able to maintain because at this point in the season, they're relatively injury-free. Oh, we have a few bumps and bruises, but nothing to keep us out of anyone out of the lineup. Uh, these players uh, have worked hard to get to this point. A lot of them have been on this team for four years and haven't won a playoff game, and this is their first time in the playoffs, and they made it all the way to the Nationals, so they'll battle through these injuries and they'll play no matter what. And while Carlo Castrocino maintains his Voyagers will be underdogs in Hamilton, it's the team's battling style he hopes will carry it to a national title. Our backs will be against the wall like it has been all year, and these guys have surprised me when, when their backs are against the wall, so hopefully they can do it again. In all, six universities split into two pools. A step further next season. Uh, actually, a great experience for the guys this year. They uh, haven't been here before, and it's the first time uh, that uh, all these players have been in a national championship and played against some uh, very competitive teams uh, at this uh, at a high caliber of soccer. And uh, although we didn't... Uh, come home with anything, uh, the experience uh, uh, really helps us in the long run and hopefully get back there next year. Following this weekend's playoffs, three members of the WA soccer playoffs kicked off in the north this afternoon. Both the men and women from Laurentian University hosting first round action. The Voyageurs facing Queens, the Lady V's taking on the Carlton Ravers. Ravens highlights from CTV's Andy Barbado. The Laurentian Voyageurs men's club finished third in the OUA East this year. They won both 
matchups against Queens in the regular season. Looking for their first playoff win since 2004, 20th minute. The Voyager strike first off the corner kick. Johnny Maurizio heads it in, one nothing home side. A minute later, the Gales appear to have answered back. Andrew Colissimo flicks it over the keeper, but offside is called. No goal on the play, still in the first. It's Mike Arnold, back of the net. Offside is called again. Laurentian would take a one nothing lead at the break in the second. Tempers Flair, Graham Weber, and Tony Tagliafiero get in each other's face. Both receive a yellow card. Then in the 86th minute, the Voyagers get some insurance. Derek Lubertino sets up Adabor Alisic. He buries it one touch, two nothing with Wrenchin. That would be your final. Scott Cliff with another shutout performance. The Voyagers now off to the Eastern semifinals. They will face Toronto on the road this coming Saturday.